each other we will walk hand in hand our God is an awesome God and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are Christians by our love our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God. Welcome to New Horizons Christian Church. Uh, as you all know by now, our drive-in worship that we were supposed to have today was canceled because of the weather. It was one of those difficult decisions, but in the end, when we weighed everything out, we knew it was the right decision. So you're, this is coming to you a little bit later, but you know, better late than never, right? So um, next week we'll also be a recorded YouTube service, but then the weekend after that, we're going to try for another drive-in worship. So uh, we just do what we can do and go week by week, just like everything in life right now. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. There is no Bible study this week. Uh, Jim is on vacation with his family, and the prayer team will not be meeting via Zoom. Uh, we, of course, will still pr be praying Tuesday uh, for all of you, so if you have any prayer requests, prayer concerns, you can contact uh, the office or myself and let us know that, and we'll add you to the list for Tuesday evening. Um, and we continue our Camp Christian series. Uh, we can't go to camp this summer, so we're bringing camp to you, and I dug another one of my favorite camp t-shirts out today, and I noticed I have paint on the back of this one, so good thing you can't see back there. Um, but today's uh, camp story that we bring to you is about a man named Martin. And the story is, where love is, there is God. So I'll be bringing that to you here shortly. So as we begin our time of worship, let's do so with prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of this day. While our plans didn't work out the way they thought we would. That doesn't mean we can't come and worship you together. We can't come and bring to you what we need to bring to you, and we can't spend time just being in these moments and in this sacred space. It doesn't matter if it's outside the building, inside the building. It matters that we are there with you, God. So we thank you for the gift of this day that we can do that, and for the gift of this time set aside that is just us with you and for worship. God, we pray that you open our eyes for what you might want us to see, open our, our ears for what you might want us to hear, and open our hearts to know that where love is, God, you are there also. We pray this through the Spirit and through the Christ. Amen. Good morning. As we prepare for our offering, I'd like to read a short reading. It's from Hermas. Do good, and with a simple heart, share the fruits of your labor, which God gives to you, with all those who are poor, not wondering to whom you should give and to whom you should not give. Give to all, for God wishes that you give to all from his gifts to you. I want to thank all of you for uh, your continued support during this pandemic and uh, let you know that the church is open five days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Rose is here from noon until about three. Tuesday, Allie and the pastor are here until from 10 o'clock on for a few hours. 
And on Thursday, uh, Brenda will be here from 1 to 3. So thank you for your continued support. And uh, it's wonderful that uh, you've been giving so much that we can continue to do God's work here at uh, New Horizons Christian Church. Thank you. As I said before, our story today is about a man named Martin, and it is where love is, there God is. And the two scriptures um, that kind of go with this story, the first one is from Luke, uh, chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. The second reading comes from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or need clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. A long time ago, in a city far away, lived a man named Martin. And Martin was a shoemaker. He lived in a basement of a home, and it only had one little window that was right at the street level and looked out on the street. Although only the feet of the people passing by could be seen, Martin could easily recognize every person by the shoes they were wearing. He had lived in that particular city for a long time and knew many of the people. Nearly every pair of shoes and boots worn by the people had passed through his hands at one point or another. Some he would resole, some he would do new stitching on, some he would simply patch. Whatever it was, shoes and boots all came to Martin for repairs. Because of his good work and all his great qualities, everyone knew Martin, and he was never out of work to do. Throughout his life, Martin was always what you would consider a good man. But as Martin started getting older, his life had an emptiness to it. You see, Martin's wife died a great many years before, leaving Martin to care for their very young son all on his own. It wasn't the easiest task to raise a son alone, and Martin had his struggles. But as his son grew, he became a help to his father. Unfortunately, that didn't last long, as Martin would have liked, because his son grew quite ill, and after a short period of suffering, his son passed away. After Martin buried his son, he fell into a very deep despair and found himself complaining to God. 
Martin's despair was so great, not only did he complain to God, but he shouted at God for not taking him, who is an old man, instead of his son, who was young and had a lot of life ahead of him. Martin's heart was very, very broken. One day, a customer came to see Martin, and he asked Martin about his family. And so Martin began talking to the visitor and shared his sorrows. I have little desire to live. I am a man without any hope. The customer told Martin, we must not judge God's doings. I think you are in despair because you wish to live for your own happiness. But, well then, what shall I live for? Martin asked. We must live for God. Martin, God gives us life, and for God's sake, you must live. When you begin to live for God, your life will be full. Martin was quiet for a few moments, and then he said, But how can one live for God? Christ has taught us how to live for God, the man said. And then he suggested to, that Martin should go buy a Bible and he should read it, and that when he read it, there will he will find out how to live for God. Later that very same day, Martin went out right away and bought himself a Bible, and he began reading. And at first he thought, well, I'll just read it once a week, or I'll just read it once in a while. But as soon as he started reading it, it cheered his soul and fed him so much that he read it every day. At times he would read it so long that all the kerosene in his lamp on his table would burn out, and he would still be reading in the dark. He couldn't tear himself away from the book. And the more Martin read, the clearer he began to understand what God wanted from him and how he should live. From that time on, Martin's whole life began to change. Martin found himself living a life that was no longer filled with sorrow, but one that was beginning to come more and more joyful. Every day, Martin would wake up and do his work, and then he would read the Bible, and every day his heart would grow just a little bit brighter than the day before. One night, Martin was reading very, very late into the night. He happened to be reading in the Gospel of Luke. He came across a verse that said, If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, no, do not withhold your shirt from them. And then it read, he read on and it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the storm struck and the house could not be shaken because it was well built on a good foundation. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the sand with no foundation. The moment the storm struck, that house collapsed and it was destroyed. Martin read these words and sat and thought for a moment and wondered, I wonder which house I am like. I want to be the house that's built on the rock. And in those moments, he softly said, help me build my house on the rock, Lord. After his moments of reflection, despite being tired, Martin wanted to keep reading. He went on, he read about the widow's son and John's disciples and, and how the rich Pharisee wanted Jesus to sit with him. He read how the woman that was a sinner anointed the Lord's feet and washed them with her tears and was forgiven. Then he reached the verse and it said, Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. Martin finished reading this and thought, 
You gave me no water, you gave me no kiss. You did not anoint my head with oil. Martin thought to himself, I am too much like that Pharisee, thinking only of myself, keeping warm and comfortable, and never thinking about my guests. And if the Lord had come to me, how would I have acted? Since it was so very late and Martin was so very tired, at some point in his wonderings and readings, Martin fell asleep at the table. Martin, a voice called from somewhere. Martin startled and was half asleep and kind of looked around and asked, who is there? But nobody answered. Martin batted his eyes and fell back to sleep in his chair. And then the voice shouted out again, Martin, Martin, look tomorrow on the street. I am coming. Martin looked around again through sleep-filled eyes, didn't see anyone, and was struggling to figure out what had just happened. Martin couldn't tell if it was a dream or if someone really had been in his house, or maybe they were shouting from the street. Everything was dark and it was very late, so Martin decided, I need to go to bed. The next morning, Martin woke up, he said his prayers, and he began getting ready for the day. He put some cabbage soup on the stove so that it could cook all day. He began heating up his tea kettle, and with his apron on, he sat down at his table by the window to begin his work for the day. As Martin was sitting by the window, his thoughts were on his strange night and how the voice he had heard surely must have had to have been a dream. Even pretty assured that it was a dream, Martin kept his eye out the window a little more during the day. Thinking he was getting crazy in his old age, Martin thought to himself that maybe, maybe he was wrong. Maybe he did hear a voice. Maybe Christ might come to his house. But as Martin looked out the window after that thought, the only person outside his house was an older man named Stephen. This caught Martin's attention, and he decided that Stephen looks like he could use a cup of tea. Martin tapped on the window and waved him inside. When Stephen came inside, he began trying to wipe his wet, mucky boots on the, on the carpet. But Martin said, don't worry about it. I'll clean it up. Just come in and get warm. Martin filled two cups of tea, one for him and one for Stephen. Stephen quickly finished his, and Martin quickly poured him another one. And while sitting together, Martin couldn't help but glancing through the window into the street from time to time. Stephen noticed Martin's distraction with the window and asked Martin if he was expecting someone. Am I expecting someone? Well, I am, and I am not. I'm a bit embarrassed to even tell you this, because I don't even know if it was a dream or something else. Maybe I had too much tea before bed. But last night, when I was reading the Bible, and I was reading about Christ and all that he did when he was on earth, Have you heard about it? I have, Stephen said. I can't read, but I have heard the stories. Martin began to tell Stephen about the reading, about the Pharisees, and how he didn't show him how how he didn't show Jesus any hospitality. And so as Martin was reading, he told Stephen that he wondered maybe he wouldn't know how to receive Christ. So Martin was thinking about what he would do in that situation. And Martin told Stephen, while I was doing all that thinking, I fell asleep. And while I was sleeping, I heard a voice tell me to be on watch tomorrow, that I shall come. Martin said, and that didn't happen once, that happened twice. So Martin filled Stephen's teacup once more, told him drink more for his good health, and then told him more of the story. You see, I had an idea that when Christ went about the earth, it was more to do with simple people. He, he always went to see simple people. He picked the disciples from ordinary men, just like us. And he says, He who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who is humbled shall be exalted. 
And whoever wishes to be exalted shall be servant to all. Because, he says, blessed are the poor, the humble, the kind, the generous. As Stephen listened to Martin talk, tears were rolling down his face. Martin tried to offer Stephen another cup of tea, but he declined. He got up and he thanked Martin for treating him so kindly. You are welcome, said Martin. Come again any time. I am always glad to see a friend. After Stephen left, Martin cleaned up the tea and put away the dishes, and he went back to his table to get back to work. As Martin did, he kept thinking about Christ and his deeds and the different speeches he made. While Martin was lost in thought, he watched many pairs of boots and shoes pass by his window. Some he recognized, some he didn't. And then a certain pair of shoes caught his attention. A pair of wooden shoes with wool stockings. Martin leaned over the window a little more to see who it was. And it was a young woman who had just walked past his window and had just stopped just outside his door. Martin looked even further out the window to see what she was carrying because he couldn't quite tell. It knew it was something, but he couldn't see. And as he saw the woman turn, she was trying to wrap her dress around this child and, and hold him against the wall to shield him from the wind. Noticing that the woman was not dressed well and they looked so very cold, Martin ran outside and told her, please, please come in and get warm. The woman was very grateful and followed Martin down the steps to his home. Martin pulled a chair close to the stove and told the woman to sit there so that she and her child could get warm. While the woman and the child got warm, Martin got out some bread and poured a bowl of soup for them. While the woman was eating and helping feed her child, she told Martin a little of her story. She was a soldier's wife, and her husband had been sent away seven months ago, and she hadn't heard anything from him. And when she was pregnant, she was a cook in somebody's home. But then after the baby was born, she was fired, and nobody else would hire her. So she couldn't keep her job, so she couldn't keep her home. Having no place to live, her grandmother told her that she would take her and the baby in. But her grandmother lived a long way off, so the journey was turning out to be very difficult for her and her child. Martin listened to her story, and then he said, Well, what about your clothes? Where are all your clothes? She said, I left them all behind because I could only carry so much. And I had to sell my last shawl yesterday so I could buy us some food. Martin got up from the table and went over to his coat rack. Here, he said, he handed her a big oversized coat. It isn't that great, but I'm certain you can turn it into something you can use. The woman looked at the coat and then at Martin, and she burst into tears, filled with gratitude. She said, oh, may Christ bless you. He must have sent me himself to your window. My little child would have frozen to death if not for you. When we started our journey, it was warm out. But this journey has been so long and the weather has changed. So I truly believe God led me to be outside your doorstep so that you could help us. Martin agreed and said, Indeed, I do believe God did that. But I have been looking through my window all day for a reason. Martin then told the woman his story about the previous night and the voice he heard. The woman looked at him and said, You know, all things are possible. She got up from the table. She put on the coat and wrapped up her and the little child and thanked Martin for his hospitality. As she began to leave, Martin stopped her, and he held out his hand, and he gave her some coins. And he said, take this and go get your shawl back. As he did that, the child waved to Martin, and Martin waved to the child, and they said their goodbyes, and they went on their way. 
Martin cleaned up the bread and the soup and went back to work at his table by the window. Martin kept watch just as he had been, but nothing out of the ordinary happened. Just as Martin was feeling discouraged with a lack of extraordinary outside his window, an older woman came walking by, carrying a basket of apples. And she had a second bag with her. And she stopped just outside Martin's window and put everything down so she could readjust. And while she was turned around adjusting all of her stuff, a little boy came up behind her and snatched an apple out of the basket. And just as he was about to get away, she turned around and she grabbed him by his coat. The little boy was screaming, let go of me, let go of me. The woman said, no, I am not, you are a thief. Martin came running outside and said, please, please let go of him. And the woman did not want to let go and she said, I am taking him to the police to teach him a lesson he will never forget. Martin pleaded with her again, said, please forgive him. Please forgive him. Let him go. I promise he won't do it again. The woman let go of the boy, but before he could run off, Martin stopped him and told him to come here and told him to ask for forgiveness. With big tears in his eyes, the, boys asked, the boy asked the woman for forgiveness, and he said, I promise I won't do it again. Martin took a coin out of his pocket and gave it to the woman and handed the boy an apple from the basket. The woman told Martin that he shouldn't reward him like that. She said the boy should be treated so that he would remember what he did for a long time. Well, that may be what our judgment tells us we should do, but that's not how it works according to God's. And then Martin asked her if that boy is to be beaten and turned into the police for stealing a small apple, then what do we deserve for our sins? The woman was silent. After a moment or two, Martin began telling the woman of the parable of the ruler who forgave the debtor and all that he owed him, and how the debtor who had been forgiven went and began to choke one who owed him. The woman listened carefully, and the boy had come back to listen as well. God has commanded us to forgive, Martin said, or else we, too, may not be forgiven. So all should be forgiven. The woman shook her head and sighed, you are right. As the woman was just about to pick up her bag and throw it on her shoulder and pick up her apple basket, the boy ran up to her and said, let me help you with that. The woman agreed and helped put the bag on the boy's back, and off the two went. Martin stood in the street and cheerfully watched the two walk and talk as they went on their way. A few moments later, he headed back to his home and back to his table to continue his work. It eventually grew dark, and Martin had difficulty, so he lit his lamp and put his work away for the day. Once everything was all squared away, Martin got out his Bible to read again. And he intended to read where he left off the day before. However, when Martin opened his Bible, it opened to a different spot. Before he could turn the page to, correct, to, to the spot that he had finished yes, the day before, something strange happened. It was a sound as if someone was in his house. He turned around to look, and there in the corner, it seemed as though there were people standing there. But Martin couldn't see them that well, and he had no idea who they were. Martin, don't you recognize me? Who? replied Martin. Me. It is I and he could see the face of Stephen in the corner, in the dark. And he stepped just forward enough for Martin to see him smiling. And then like a little cloud, it was gone. And it is I, said the voice from the dark, and then, then he could see the face of the young woman and the child. And he could see them and they smiled, and then their faces were gone. And it is I, said the voice, and both the old woman and the little boy's faces could be seen. And they smiled, and then they were gone. With joy in his heart, Martin turned himself back towards his table and the Bible, and he looked at the page that it had mistakenly opened to, and at the top of the page, he read, For when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. 
When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you invited me in. A little further down the page, Martin read, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. And at that moment, Martin truly understood his dream and knew that he did come to him that day. And Martin truly did receive him. So my wish for you, my friends, is to keep your eyes open for those who may need some hospitality. Keep your eyes open for Christ coming in all different ways, in all different places, through all different people. And extend that love to them just as God extends it to us. Amen. And now we come to the communion table. This is what God commanded us to do to remember him by, because he did this for us. Join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You remember that night when Jesus sat with his disciples and he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, all of you. In the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup is the blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of sin. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Now at this time, I invite you to take your bread and your cup, whatever they may be for you this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for being there for us. You're our rock. You're our salvation. You've been with us through so much. This bread that we just partake of symbolizes your body that was broken for us. So many of us are going through trials and tribulations now. Be with us, guide us, and direct us. We just drank a symbol of your blood that is blood of forgiveness. Help us to forgive everyone, all the burdens that we hold, and help us to forgive ourselves for things that we've done wrong. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. It wasn't quite what we expected. Our plans changed, but here we are anyways. And it has been good, and it has been wonderful to have you all with us. So as we go now, let us go in grace, go in peace, and go in love. Amen. We remember you, we remember you, by your sacrifice of love, all glory now is due, at this table here, mercy hovers near, thanks is offered up, in this bread and cup we remember you precious risen lamb jesus who was slain now enthroned in glory forever you will reign gladly we embrace both these signs of grace thanks is offered up in this bread and cup we remember you